I hereby call the Iberia Parish Council agenda of August 27th to, uh, to order. Uh, Ms. Broussard, you have the prayer? Yes, Lord, we come to you tonight with uh, thankful hearts. Lord, we uh, thank you for what you're doing in Iberia Parish, Lord, and uh, we thank you for uh, the improvements we see and the things that are going uh, good and the, the changes that are being made. Lord, we thank you for uh, allowing us to work together, Lord, allowing us to have this opportunity to have these meetings to uh, conduct the business of Iberia Parish, Lord. Uh, as we sit here tonight, Lord, we want to give a special blessing to uh, those serving in our military, Lord, those that are home and those that are away, Lord. And we also want to uh, say a special prayer for those that are uh, in the path of this uh, monstrous hurricane that's out there, Lord, and, and keep people safe. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Gonsalant, a pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Tommy Pollard. Here. Michael Landry. Here. Tommy Landry. Here. Lloyd Brown. Here. Warren Goshasang. Here. Natalie Broussard. Here. Paul Landry. Here. Ricky Gosselin. Here. Joe Duga. Here. Eugene Olivier. Here. Brian Napier. Here. Berwick Francis. Marty Traha. Here. Chad Machuan. Here. Okay, we have a quorum and uh, need a motion and a second to go into public comments. I have a motion by Mr. Brown, a second by Mr. Pollard. Roll call. Go ahead and push it. Joe. 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 Yes, Joe. That motion passes. We're now in public comments. Uh, comments from the general public on non agenda items. A. Mr. Carl Pat Viator to address the council regarding drainage issues with Segura Canal on Viator property. Mr. Viator, we, uh, we have state your name and we do have a three minute, uh, three minute limit. I'm uh, Carl Pat Viator. I live at uh, 204 Santa Ines and my family and I own about 2,000 acres of property in Iberia Parish and also St. Marville. As you see, I've been fooling with this for about three months. Uh, there's a ditch that was dug, uh, the Chagur Canal. And uh, as I see it, about eight to 10 feet did cave in. And as it goes, it's gonna probably be more footage going in. And we do, I have a map in the front of y'all. It's gonna show a bridge. The bridge has the true levee side where the original levy was. So I went to Sarah. She gave me some information. I would have to hire a surveyor. I would have, my family would have to spend maybe four or five thousand dollars. This is not about what Iberia Parish is supposed to be. So I came up to reverse all this. As you see, the right of way is 110 feet, 55 feet from center. All I'm saying now is stay on your right away. If it caves in and you just have 10 feet to dig on one side, that's your problem. And I think I'm not gonna spend another nickel. And why should I have to pay for an error that the parish council did? Not the council, public works. I thank you, I'm finished with this. Now. I mean, it didn't make sense when you left, uh, Larry, and then Andy put all this, you know, that Mr. I had to spend Mr. about four five thousand Mr. Viator, Mr. Viator, yeah, just, just let's stay directing on here. Well, it's all part of it. You know that, Paul. You've seen I, the dish too, sir. I know, Pat. I know. And uh, we are addressing it. We uh, came up. We did talk about the reduction of the easement. We're not gonna, we're not, uh, we're gonna leave the easement as it is and where it stops. We're not gonna, we're not gonna push it back further into your land. It'll stay where yeah. it is. And we'll work on trying to fill the the small spot uh, with some material and things. But again, this is a administration thing, and Mr. Richard is working on it. We've talked about it. Well, every I mean, I'm talking now. about it for three months. Now, FEMA is going to get involved with this too. I I, so I understand. Okay. You know. Okay, and that's it. Okay, we're going to go to uh, 
Item number B, Mr. David Broussard to address the council regarding restarting of the DARE program. Okay, uh, Mr. Broussard is not here. Um, the next person to speak is uh, Mr. Ronald Gosselin. He wants to talk about the proposed roundabout on Highway 90. Mr. Bruce Gosselin. Good evening, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. My name is Ronald Gosselin. I live on Jefferson Island Highway, 4804 Jefferson Island. And I'd like to speak with all of you referencing the proposed roundabout that you all have in mind to put um, near Landry Seafood and uh, Highway 90 overpass. My interest in all of this is the fact that the proposed road that y'all have going to the airport is not going to the tower like most of you all think. It's not going to improve the hurried upness of FedEx trucks. It's going to the dog pound because the road is at the roundabout and it goes straight to the seaway. Dog pound is the closest thing to you. Just want you all to understand the direction of that road that's proposed to go across IDF property. My interest in this is I've been involved in two accidents already myself personally in wrecks with people that are exiting Highway 90. We've had equipment involved in two others. I've had friends and neighbors involved in wrecks. And I'm asking and pleading with you all, when you all propose the roundabout, don't take it just for your road that's proposed to go to IDF, across IDF and towards the dog pound. Take it into consideration for the lives and the people that are getting injured exiting Highway 90 and traveling down Jefferson Island Road. Yes, it would have to be a big roundabout because it's gonna include frontage roads, exits and entrances to Highway 90, Jefferson Island, and your proposed road, IDF Road. I ask you all, before you go forward with this, take into consideration the needs that we have in our area and every one of you that travel that road because it is dangerous. Contact your sheriff's department. You'll have an accident there at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, more than that sometimes. But please give it the consideration that it needs to have and not just the one road proposed to go to the dog pound. It's the roads that we all use every day to go in and out of New Iberia. And that's really what I'm here for, just to make a statement for you all to, to take into consideration. Larry's aware of it, but before this proceeds, understand our interests, our needs, and our wants. It's in Tommy Landry's district, and, and you all travel on that road. Every one of you in this, in this room, you'll need to look at it and make a big roundabout. Yes, it's gonna be big, but it's worth it to save some people's injuries. Thank you. Thank Any questions? Well, I'm gonna, um, the, the first of all, that uh, we appreciate you coming and talking, but uh, it is going to be a big roundabout to be able to hand, uh, handle the Bayrod Trucking Company. And, but this is a state project, but uh, I'll get with Mr. Richard after the meeting, and, uh, and we'll address some of these concerns. Yeah, well, Bayrod Trucking is just one, they're sure. just one of the businesses. We have 18 wheelers that travel it as well, hauling sugar cane. But I can just tell you. I mean, there's 18 wheelers that come out, there's cars, there's car, it's just it's full of it. Y'all need to just travel it. The, the other day, a car hit one of my neighbors, hit his pickup truck by the right, by the left rear axle, and rolled that truck up with four wheels up, and had four men in that truck. I'm just trying to tell y'all, it's dangerous. I'll and the whole thing is, it's the angle that you attack it. It's not a T, it's an angle. And yes, the state is aware of it, and yes, you're now aware of it. Let them do the right thing. Not the halfway thing going to the dog pound. Do the right thing. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. I'll, I'll get with Mr. Richard. Okay, item number two, we have no items from the general public on agenda items, so I need a motion and a second to go back into regular min minutes. Mr. Brown and Mr. Olivier, roll call. A motion passes. Reports, Finance and Administration Action, item number one, balance sheet for June 2018, and number two, budget report for June 2018 was in your package. Reports of parish and other governmental agencies, we had none. 
uh, public works report, public works department report for closed work orders dated July 23rd to 27th, July 30th to August 6th, and August 6th to 10th is in your packet. Special business, we have none. Council member announcements. Mr. Gonsolin, you have the floor. Yeah, so we've got a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, they have a grand opening for the Kids Center, keeping kids in domestic situations safe. Uh, Supervised Visitation and Monitoring Exchange Center. That's going to be held September the 6th, 2018, 5.30 p.m. on 114 Church Alley in Iberia. It's a well worthwhile program. Please try to support this endeavor. Second of all, tomorrow night is the CCA Banquet, which is a wonderful organization that represents the coastal parishes, and it's called the Sugar Chapter, and it's uh, at the Cade Community Center. And uh, it's an it's, uh, event to go out and support all recreational fishermen in the parish and other parishes as well. And, uh, you know, we're the Sportsman's Paradise of Louisiana, so we need to go out and support this organization. It's a great organization to be involved in. That's it. Thank you very much. Mr. Gosha, Sam. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to announce you that I be, um, Acadian and Hope for the Cure is having their Iberia Parish Kids Cancer Walk on September 22nd. 2018 registration will be at 8 a.m. in the New Iberia City Park. Also on November 4th, the Ronella Vo Volunteer Fire Department will be having its pulled beef po' boy uh, barbecue sale. It's a fundraiser for the Volunteer Fire Department. That's going to be November 4th, 2018, and I think it's from uh, 11 to 1. And also, my daughter Eileen's having another lemonade stand on September 8th from 10 to 2 and they're going to be raising money for Iberia Council on Aging. So. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Mr. Gosh, Sam. Ms. Bruce Orrin. Yeah, last week we had a pretty busy week. We had um, Mr. Reshort presented his uh, State of the Parish address and uh, we had a lot of council members attend that. We wanted to thank Mr. Reshort for uh, conducting that. We had a great turnout. I, I see it's on Facebook and different uh, avenues if anybody wasn't able to to go and and see and um, hear how much we are uh, moving forward and, and things are looking good for Iberia Parish. Uh, we also had the Region 3 meeting in Napoleonville and uh, several of us attended that and a couple of us won some uh, cool door prizes but I'm not going to talk about that, huh? Um, well, you know, they want to steal them, so. Um, and then um, and we, we had so many different activities last week it was busy um, but I also wanted to announce that um, we, I was selling the little stickers last meeting for the benefit for Seth Champagne now they're having a blood drive for him on uh, Saturday September 8 2018 from 9 to 5 at Diberry Parish training fire training center on Dornell Road so if you want to uh, give blood and uh, help to that cause and they're also selling t-shirts as well uh, if you're interested in doing anything to help uh, our firemen uh, you can contact any of the uh, members of the Iberia Parish Fire District for um, that information. Uh, any other comments? Um, just to let the council know the gentleman that we are it was only women that uh, won <laughs> prizes. Ms. Bruce Art and Ms. Uh, Ms. Brenda Okay, we're on to yeah, yeah. Well, we're now on to parish president's announcements, Ms. Richard. Okay, on Saturday we're going to start the litter abatement and collection program, which is something we've been waiting to do for a while. This is a program that's actually being done by the parish, along with the um, district attorney, Bo Dewar's office, 16 JDA. It's something that we need big time in Iberia Parish. We have litter all over this parish. And what we're doing, we're going to be using from the judges, we're going to be using the um, um, uh, people that have, um, I guess it's called um, community service time. And we look to make this a big deal for Iberia Parish. They're doing it in other parishes, it's working very well. Uh, you have a resolution that you, or a summary you can be talking about tonight, hopefully that passed, just to make it all official. But this is actually going to start on Saturday. And thank all of you for your help in making this become official a little bit later because I'm sure you're going to support it. Uh, with that, I know we have a lot to discuss tonight, uh, so I'm not going to hold you up with too many different things that's going on in the parish. I thank all of you. Okay. Now we'll move on to consent agenda items, uh, minutes to regular meetings of July 11, 2018. It was published on August 9th. 
the regular meeting of July 25th, 2018, regular meeting <coughs> of August 8th, 2018, summary number 147, introduced by the Clerk of the Council, a resolution proclaiming the month of September 2018 as Suicide Awareness Month in Iberia Parish. Summary number 148, introduced by the parish president, a resolution <coughs> requesting financial assistance from the state of Louisiana on the fiscal 2017-2018 local government assistance program and community water enrichment fund program. Summary number 149, introduced by the parish president, a resolution authorizing the filling of an application with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development for a grant under 49 CFR 5311 non-urbanized area formula program and or 49 CFR 5339 discriminatory capital program. Summary number 150. A resolution authorizing the filing of an application with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development for a grant under 49 CFR 5311 unurbanized area formula, formula program and or 49 CFR 5339 discreditary capital program discretionary a little, a little. summary number 151 introduced by the parish president a resolution authorizing the parish president to execute a cooperative endeavor agreement by and between Iperia Parish Government and M. Bofield Dewey, District Attorney for the 16th Judicial District of Louisiana for the purpose of establishing, operating, and maintaining a court-approved community service litter abatement and collection program in Iberia Parish, summer number 152, introduced by the Clerk of the Council, a resolution <coughs> endorsing the application of Cane River Pecans for the Restoration Tax Abatement Program. Do we have any items that anyone wants to remove from the consent agendas? Mr. Gosselin. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I just take a moment to, uh, on summary number 147, I'd like to recognize a group of people back here that are really sure. doing the effort uh, for suicide awareness. Mr. Watney, Ms. Watney, Ms. Cynthia Elmer, Ms. Russo, and I. Ms. Broussard. So uh, th these, these ladies and gentlemen do a great effort in a, in a well-needed program in this, in this parish, and uh, I'd like to thank you for your efforts. <coughs> thank you all very much. From the council, let us know. All right. Um, Ms. Bruce Orn. I was just making a motion. Okay. And um, we have a, um, a second by Mr. Gonsolin. Yep. Any, anything anybody wants to take off? Yes. Okay, Mr. Uh, Dugan. I have a question about camera number 151. Uh, Mr. Richard, this, uh, this litter abatement program looks sounds like it's a good Mr. idea. Dugan, yeah, we'll go ahead and pull it, and we'll vote oh, okay. on the others, and we'll come okay. back. I, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull 151. Anything else? Any questions? Okay. Roll call. Ms. Uh, Bruce Ord and Mr. Gonsler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Brian and Joel. Brian. Okay, those motion passes. Now we're going to be on to summary number 151. Um, Mr. Dugan. Uh, yeah, uh, it sounds like a very nice program. Mm -hmm. What's the cost associated with this? We figure it's going to be somewhere around 6000 a year. So, okay. Somewhere around. For the remainder of this year, around $6,000. Okay, so that's half a year, so it's about twelve thousand dollars a year. We, we we'll have a better understanding of that once we get everything calculated for you for the budget. And where, how is that going to be funded? It's going to come through a solid waste fund right now. Solid waste. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so obviously you got enough money. In oh, absolutely. There. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be a big deal, Joe. We we got a lot of trash all over this parish that oh, needs to I've be seen picked it. up. I, I, I know. I've seen yeah. It so we have to do what we got to do to make it work. But thank you for the question, Mr. Trajo. If they're doing this through community service, won't they have to pay a fee? No. Uh, oh, and the I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Paul, I'll, I'll try to quickly help you out here. Uh, <clears throat> Oftentimes, defendants are sentenced to serve public service pro pro Community. probation in order to perform public service, specifically in DWIs, a certain amount of uh, <coughs> probation, a certain amount has to be done on public service. That public service has to be 
uh, done in a court approved community service program. So what you're getting is free a litter abatement pickup. Right. Uh, the DA's office will supply the, uh, the uh, persons who are on probation the, the names to Public Works. Public Works will have a supervisor uh, to supervise uh, on a regular basis mm -hmm. uh, every Saturday or every other Saturday. Every other Saturday. And uh, they'll be assigned certain areas to, to go pick up. There's no cost to the applicant. The DA's office is providing uh, some of the items necessary to do it along with the uh, Iberia Parish government. I think what you'll find out is when you look at the value of the time and effort of those individuals as well as the items that are picked up, it will far exceed any oh potential Lord. cost uh, to, to the parish. Uh, so uh, it was kicked off in St. Mary, in Iberia, and you try to get to St. Martin also. and. Uh, and again, because it's court approved, the judges have approved and designated this. There is uh, a, an immunity from damages. Uh, plus, there was, uh, I think, both offices saw an extra rider on your insurance policy if you're concerned about that. But I think uh, the, all the bases have been covered to make this a potentially very successful program to assist in the litter abatement in the parish. I'm sorry. Every other, once every uh, every other week. It could grow into something more, but I, I, everybody needs to walk a little bit, crawl a little bit before you start running or walking, but uh, I think it'll be a good program for you. What, 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 the way we're going to start it off, just so you know, is that we're going to have two trucks, <clears throat> and we don't have a van right now, so we're going to have two trucks, and that's going to create a little bit more expense. That's why I'm saying it's going to be probably close to $7,000, maybe 6000 7000 for the remainder of the year. But we're going to look to purchase a van where we can actually haul 15 people, up to 15 people in a particular van. So the way we're going to do it now, we're going to have roughly 10 people. But we're going to have to pay for two supervisors right now because we don't have a van. Hopefully moving forward next year, we'll have a van, so we just have to have one person from Public Works working there. That's the reason I can't give you the exact number. Uh, until I get that van, we're going to have to use two supervisors. But when everything is all said and done, uh, we hope to have one van, one supervisor. Uh, district attorney is actually supplying all the personnel. We supply one person, uh, but we got to, you know, we're going to supply the fuel and whatever else, what the, whatever the case is. This is a major win, so we get a chance to put out ten people at one time, cleaning up in Iberia Parish, up to ten people. So that's that's pretty big. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Ms. Broussard? Yeah, I'd like to make the motion authorizing the execution of the agreement. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and finish what uh, some more speakers, Ms. Sagasha, said. Nobody has a motion to second, then start the discussion. Okay. I got a motion from Ms. Broussard. Uh, we have a second from anybody? <laughs> no, we pulled it from the consent agendas. Good. I have a se second by Mr. Michael Brown, Mr. Gushison. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a tough week. Michael Landry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just suggest to the administration that you get with the school board possibly because there's work service hours that individual organizations are always looking for those kids in, in the high school, especially to help. So I don't think it has to be those who maybe did the fine and have to pay the time. Uh, I think you can get some of those students that do want to pick up. I think there's organizations that do go around the parish each year, once or twice a year. Also, um, will this be within the city <coughs> limits too, or just on incorporated areas of the parish? We're going to be doing the parish. So the entire, even in the municipalities, also, you okay. we're going to go wherever we have trash. But okay. we, we we're starting off. I can tell you right now in the rural area because that's where okay. we have most of the trash. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Brown. Yeah, that's what I wanted to yeah. know. If you had gotten with the mayor yeah. also, you know, to do in the city. Actually, also. the mayor is trying to do some things on his own right now as well in the city. Yeah, but we we all going to pick up in the city. We're going to pick up wherever we have trash, the most trash. Actually, those locations are going to be decided upon by public works. Yeah, okay. We get a lot of requests in, in the parish trash on, on different roads so we want to try to go to these road to these roads in the parish where we have the trash first yeah. and as we start to clean up the parish the city is in the parish you're right right okay. i just so, wanted to make sure that the yeah. city was included right I'm done. Um, 
Mr. Sheely add something else? I, I was just going to indicate, I'm not speaking for the city, but <clears throat> they are going to establish a similar Darwin. program right. for those placed on probation in city court. So there will be a separate program in all likelihood <coughs> picking up trash within the corporate limits of people who have been sentenced in city court. That was it. Right. This is going to be primarily for those who are sentenced in district court. Right. And we'll, and we'll, yeah. We, we, we don't want to be falling all over <laughs> each other. I, I'm sure that it'll be coordinated. It will be coordinated. But, but primarily. It will be coordinated. But, but, but Lloyd, if I can. Yep. But, ahead, Lloyd, they're, they're doing the same thing. Fred is trying to do the same thing right now through the, through Judge Hike. That's that's the goal. The goal is to clean up Iberia Parish, which consumes or includes the city. All right. Mr. Brown, Mr. Dugal? Uh, yeah, thank you. So I, I, I'm, I am confused about one thing. Um, I don't know that. You said $12,000 a year, $6,000? I said six to $7,000 for the remainder of the year. Okay. And I also said that when budget come, we should have a better number for you for next year. Okay, doing so budget. we will address it in budget. Cause, Absolutely. Because getting a van would surely exceed exactly. six to $7,000 right. a year. So I just and we're not talking sure. a new van if we do get one. We're talking from the state. We're talking, we're, we're talking a surplus van, but we'll let you know more of that later. All right. Thank you. right now, we're trying to get this started. We have to, we have to get this parish clean. We're losing businesses when people come here because they're getting in the areas where you have trash all over the place, and I want to get it cleaned up. Uh, maybe we Thank should you. do a better job of prosecuting those that get caught. When they get caught. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no further discussion. We do have a motion by Ms. Bruce Orr, a second by Mr. Gashasan. Roll call. Okay, that motion passes. Summary number 4925 introduced by Warren P. Gashasa, an ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the Compiled Ordinances of Iberia Parish to amend and reenact Section 2-2.1 relating to the times and dates, agenda closure deadlines, and agenda procedures for committee meetings to provide for additional routine administrative matters that may be placed directly on regular and special counting meeting agendas without the necessary necessity of obtaining a recommendation from the appropriate committee to provide for the effective date thereof and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I have a, a motion by Mr. Gashasan, a second by Mr. Gonsalam. Mr. Gashasan. Oh, I'll, I'll wait, Mr. Chairman. I, I didn't author this, but I, I guess I, my name was put behind it. Okay. Um, no, it was just, I mean, a motion. I, I see my name was on it. Okay. See where it was coming from. Oh. And we have a second by Mr. Gonsalan. Any other further discussion? Mr. Ms. Bruce Is what it is this? Some I think I think this was actually put up by Mr. Gashasan. This is the one that we're trying to um, speed up what goes before planning right. and zoning. I thought I had the floor. You got it right. Uh, this is the the request to kind of speed up what's going on in planning and zoning. And so if it comes out of planning and zoning with a favorable recommendation by the committee uh, then it doesn't have to go to our committee meetings first it can come straight to full council so that we can speed things up um, the actual ordinance that was in our packet uh, i'd like to make a motion to uh, amend it to read that it would be an ordinance amending chapter two of the compiled ordinances of iberia parish louisiana to amend and reenact section 2-2.1 relating to the times and dates agenda closure and deadlines for agenda procedures for committee meetings to provide for additional routine administrative matters that may be placed directly on the regular or special council meeting agendas without the necessity of obtaining of obtaining a recommendation from the appropriate committee to include the following ordinances authorizing zoning reclassifications and special conditional use permits which received a favorable vote from the of the parish zoning commission 
and resolutions granting preliminary and or final approval of subdivisions which received a favorable vote of the Iberia Parish Planning Commission to provide for the effective date thereof and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. There you go. Okay, I have a motion by Ms. Broussard and a second by Mr. Goshesam. Uh, any other discussion, Ms. Broussard? No. Okay, Mr. Goshesam? Yeah, it, it sounds better now that you said that, but I mean, it sounded like the language changed a bit from when it got out of committee to, to here, which I'm in agreement. Go ahead. Did you want yeah, to I, I, I can help there. We simply added those items in the title, and Correct. the purpose for that was, Brenda pointed out, and correctly so, that if you don't include that information sometimes if she does a word search if you if you call okay. and said hey what what that ordinance that added okay. this without those in the title sometimes it doesn't show up on a word search so we're, we're trying uh, to make it so it's easier for well, i'm not in objection yeah. to it i do yeah, understand now i just same, got caught off guard for a second we just added okay the, uh, I, I do want to say though uh come into council i know we, we over the past two years we've made streamlining for ourselves and now we're able to do it for the residents of the parish to get in and out quicker to be able to to course development better in this parish thank you, thank you. so i do a, i do commend sarah i thought she thank worked you. with andy on this in thank the administration so, so this this is something this is a win for us at the end of the day so thank you okay. mr <coughs> Traha. yeah you answer my question i just want to check with sarah to see if she was all in agreement it's all, it's, okay. it's all come from the administration good. sir Okay, no further discussion. Uh, we're voting on um, 4925. Roll call. That motion passes. Summary number 4926 introduced by the Clerk of the Council and Ordinance requesting mm -hmm. the Louisiana Secretary of State to grant exemptions for precincts in Iberia Parish with less than 300 voters, including A, District 1, Precinct 4, B, District 7, Precinct 5, C, District 10, Precinct 6, D, District 10, Precinct 7, E, District 11, Precinct 5, F, District 11, Precinct 7, and further authorizing submission to the legislator and our Secretary of State for review and approval. Have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Gonsalam. Ms. Broussard? Wait. Mr. Gonsalam? Wait. Roll call. That motion passes. Resolutions introduced. Summary number 153 introduced by the Communication District, a resolution approving the name of a private road to be known as Jake's Place Road located off of Bull Island Road, District 13. I have a motion by Mr. Trahal, a second by Ms. Broussard. Mr. Trahal. Yes. Can I refer to Prescott Marshall? Yes. Mr. Prescott, state. Yes, here. sir. Yes. Everything's in line. Yeah, it, this is essentially a very long driveway to a family compound. It's kind of like if you can imagine your fingers into your hand. Um, and the addresses now are kind of messed up, and the family came wanting to add another property. And I convinced them for safety purposes what we need is a named road instead of just an unnamed driveway. And we can address it off of that road. So that's the purpose, just so we can give it a coherent uh, addressing scheme for this little cluster of homes. Um, I think it's off of Bull Island Road. Sarah, will you get him with him on that for those addresses? What we uh, yeah, and that what he's doing is absolutely correct. It's much safer when you have, you know, houses that are about a thousand feet off the road to have a named road in front of them, so 911 personnel can find them at any given time. Because again, when it's midnight raining, you know, it's much easier to find. So the I'm good. Thank you. Okay, no other discussion. Roll call. That motion passes. Summary number 154 introduced by Ricky J. Gonsolin, a resolution authorizing the parish president to conduct an analysis of parish owned properties with the participation of the council to determine the utilization and a plan for the liquidation of properties that are underutilized and further to present said report by November 1st, 2018. Have a motion by Mr. Gonsolin, a second by Mr. Napier. Mr. Gonsolin? Yeah, I think this is a uh, an overdue issue that we need to address. I think uh, we have some meetings planned to come up with a list here shortly. 
And uh, I think we, we set a date by November, huh? November 1st. November 1st. And I think uh, we're going to get together and come up with a consensus agreement on some properties and see where we move from there. I think it's uh, I something worthwhile. So. Uh, can any of you uh, let me know who want to participate with me in administration on this? Yep. Okay. Just let Brenda know, and Brenda can give me a list. Uh, get it okay. With, with, um, could, could, with Cindy. Could we get possibly get a list of all parish owned property before will. the meeting so we can just kind of look at it? That's what I'm getting at. So once we figure out who want to be involved in this, we're all going to, all going to get a package and we'll work it together. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Napier? Uh, I, I echo what, um, what Ricky just said, and I'm, I'm anxious to be involved with it. Let me put my name down, Brenda, with, with you, you, Mr. Richard. Thank you. Okay. No further discussion. Uh, roll call. A motion passes summary number 155 introduced by the economic development district number one a resolution amending the 2018 economic development district number one fund budget in the amount of fifty thousand to provide funding for an engineering study of the waterworks district number three service area all to be <coughs> funded from previously dedicated funding for the highway 14 sewage project and with said funding to be repaid if the district is successful in receiving grant funding from usda i have a motion by mr napier i have a second by michael landry mr napier okay i, I know we beat this horse uh to the ground uh i, I guess my 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 question uh, we have talked about all the um, the issues that's needed in Waterworks 3 um, and and Chad surely touched on it um, we've all touched on it um, in in and I'm just throwing this out in, instead of doing that study is a study really needed in Chad I guess I'm asking you if, if you in into this more than than most of us couldn't we put that money to to actually doing something is that because you had uh, the reason i'm saying it you had said and correct me if i'm wrong that dubrock knows what needs to be done at I, I oh, that. Uh, we, we were expecting some representatives with the water district three to be present tonight but um doesn't seem there and, and that's twice that we've asked for them to yeah. to come and uh, we haven't seen mr dubrock had uh he was unable to attend but uh two of the members of the board were going to be here and i'm guessing something else came up but uh it doesn't seem we're going to get any answers from them tonight and uh you know like what you're stating brian i agree with you i, I think we'd be better off putting the money towards repairs than studying anything but uh to get those answers it doesn't look like it's gonna happen tonight so so that that you know and you know, i mean i guess everybody else can chime in but um you, you know I, my my feeling has always been let, let's if we if we got a problem at hand with what we got i'm not against the study at all going all the way like eugene wanted to go to to the parish line but surely we need to fix what we got and then and then move on and and th we need to spend that much money and i don't know maybe larry you might have something to say about it that, that we got to spend that much money to figure out or, or why don't we just try to do what we got to do it and, and I'll <coughs> step back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Tron. Yes, we were at Region 3 meeting last Thursday and me and Eugene got with a lady by real water and Eugene might be able to elaborate on a little bit more. Uh, no worries. I know y'all don't want to spend the money, but if we're going to get any other kind of money to work on the water system, which we can't afford to fix on our own, we need to have that study done. Now, what extent y'all want to go to, that's fine. But we need a shelf-ready project to go for the money, okay? And we can't repair it on our own. I don't think we can repair it on our own. I don't think we have the money. I don't think Water District 3 has the money. But y'all, a study needs to be done to where we can go put applications for different types of money. And that's, that's all. It. I mean, that's it. we have to have a study done. A study was never done when it was private or when it was public, okay? A study needs to be done. In, in order to get the grants. You know, or we gotta look at doing something else with the Water District. 
but we need that study. We, we, we have to have that study. Okay. You know, with 14 of us, we can make a decision how far we want to go with that study. But we need that study to go apply for different types of funding. And rural water, That's which it. we are or will be classified as rural water. Okay, Mr. Richard? Basically, Marty just said it. You have to have the analysis in order to try to, to apply to try to get the funding. And, and Chad, I think you're correct. Over the years, they probably have a lot of information. Um, but, but you're going to have to have some type of formal analysis done um, to be able to qualify to get those dollars from rural water. Correct? Are you talk, are we talking 10 or 20 million dollars. We're going to have to go out and bond and pay some uh, Mr. Mr. Brown. Yeah. Okay. We, y'all right. We we beat this to death. <laughs> so, uh, this is what I want to say. If we give up the fifty thousand, what are we gonna give it up to do? What if we say let's take it and let's let's get uh, District Three uh, fixed? What what, what what would we do? What would we accomplish with that? You, you asking me? I'm asking. No, I'm just saying. No, I, I, I can't tell you, Mr. Brown. That there's nobody here to answer the question. Yeah. Um, but the, the reason why I'm saying that is, I don't think that it's gonna get far. Yeah. Uh, the study gonna help us, but we won't get far with this fifty thousand. No. If that would take care of your problem, I would say yeah, let's do it. But I don't see much that we could do with this. So, I, I don't plan to beat it no more, so I'm done. Mr. Gosh, you're saying. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just suggest that, you know, whatever we decide to do tonight, that we table it until we know someone is officially going to come so we don't keep the advertisement costs going with it. And two, we, as a council, need to decide whether or not, you know, do Brock or are we going to study the whole deal or are we going to just focus on the water plant that, that we're having the issues in Koto. I mean, I, I know we keep saying 50,000, we keep studying more, but it's just like we did with the roads. We did a study on the roads and we can't fix them because we don't have the money. So I, I don't want to do the same thing with water. You know, if we don't have to spend the money, if we know we don't have it and there's no grant availability out there, then there's no point of doing a study for it. But, I mean, I am for doing a study if Dubrock thinks he needs for the information to get the residents that all, we are collecting from on, on, on target where we need to be. So that's just a suggestion to the council. Mr. Michael Landry? Uh, man, I came to two or three meetings with Dubrock. And, and seriously, the last meeting I came to, they had two parish councilmen sitting in here. And if you don't do a study, you can't apply for nothing. And, and like Mr. Brown said, $50,000 ain't going to solve them problems. We, you know, so we need to apply for grants or something they got to have a study from the federal government, the state, or anybody else. I think it's time that we move this forward and stop punting it down the road or whatever. I'm finished. Mr. Dugan. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to depend on some of my fellow councilmen that attended that meeting the other night, but I could have swore, swore I heard them say they had an $800,000 CDBG grant. So they've already got grant money. I'd like to know what specifically they're going to use that for. So the 50000 is not depending on whether they're going to get a grant or not. And, and I mean, I don't know that, that, that we need to pursue $50,000. Thank you. That's a waterline extension. But that's not, that's, not rural, that's not rural development. That's CDBG. That's not USDA dollars. Those are... Um, uh, CDBG funds, capital CDBG funds. Those are not U.S. That's, that's for waterline extensions. And so, look, uh, you look at uh, Bayou Test Waterworks and Loco, and they're extending out into the rural area, and they're doing it with their own funds. So we know that it that can it be, can be done. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Mr. Tommy Landry. From, from what I was Locke told, I understand the, uh, the fifty thousand dollars is to begin to study. <laughs> Not just not in problems at the plant, but the entire system as it relates to that area. Uh, Lafayette, uh, 
Regional mm -hmm. airport got $10 million today, okay, for the airport, uh, federal grant money. And they, they had to put money up to get that yeah, grant, too. and they had to do a study, and they had to uh, come up with plans before they were even considered. Uh, these are the kind of things that I think we need to do to, to get to where we can position the parish to receive federal dollars. And I think by delaying it and tabling it, it's just going to delay our, our process and our progress. <clears throat> so I got to say. Ms. Broussard. I mean, Tommy said part of what I was going to say is I think we're do talking about two different things. Uh, several of you are talking about what do we need to do to get the plant where it needs to be to service the people that we already have and the rest are talking about what do we need to do to get a shelf ready project in the works so that we can apply for grant money i, I think we're talking about two different things um, what we did out of committee was we removed anything other than waterworks district 3 service area and so this is this study is not to do just what does the plant need but what does waterworks district three service area need to do for uh, rural development um, we did that because we didn't feel like it was prudent to spend fifty thousand dollars on a study that went all the way to the parish line at this point when we know we have so much that needs to be done in waterworks district three so we wanted to concentrate more on waterworks district three but I didn't hear that we wanted to kill doing a study altogether. What I heard was let's limit it to District 3. We left it at $50,000 requesting someone from Dubrock to be here to tell us if we're scaling down the study, what do we need to do to scale down the price? So I think the only thing we should be debating tonight, because we debated everything else, is do we table it till we hear from Dubrock, or do we just reduce the amount from 50000 to 25000 and say, you know, here we are, we're, we're going to do the study so that we know what Waterworks right. District 3 is, and we'll have a shelf-ready project to apply for grants. So. Uh, seeing that the nods from from my council members I would amend it to um, I would offer a, an amendment to do uh, up to twenty five thousand dollars for the study and we can always come back and add more money if we need to once we hear from DeBrock um, to, to see 30. Thirty. All right. Uh, okay. Next, we're gonna, we're gonna finish. Yeah, we're gonna finish the discussion. Uh, Mr. Traha, you're next. Yes, I think we got water well problems. We got pressure problems. We got things in the in the deal that had the water wells. You know the conditioning of the water. We got several different problems at Koto that needs to be addressed. You know, I don't think Is it's that just where one. Our focus should be? Yes. Finish, Paul. Okay. Mr. Gonsalam. Yeah. No, I, I echo some of what Ms. Bruce was saying. I just thought that some of the figures that I looked at from Dubrock were extremely high going into this thing for what we were getting. So, you know, I'm, I'm an advocate of fixing what we have in-house, but I understand the theory of Mr. Landry's great point. You know, we, we got to do something to get these grants and whether we can match them or not. So, you know, reducing this by a significant amount of money and, and moving forward might be an option to consider. Okay, Mr. Brown. No, I, I, I say 30 uh, if you were going to reduce it. That's probably, that's, that's probably good. Okay, um, Mr. Gosher, Sam? I guess I must have misunderstood in, in committee because, I mean, the reason we said we were going to change the way we did is because Dubrock was going to come. I agree with you. And Dubrock does know some of the problems that the issues that they've had because I've been in several of those meetings where he gave a description of what the cost was to fix the plant I, I don't know if we need to continue to study the plant or, or even the water line extensions or problems that they have it he knows exactly where the problems are i think it's just getting him here i think he had a maybe a conflict of schedule Another that he couldn't do that's what he said. but i will tell you though i mean I, when i sat in that meeting most of those members on there were for ex future expansions but i think the focus like tommy said yeah i mean we need to focus on what, what the problems are as a whole as an area but we don't have to put a funding mechanism behind it until we talk to him i don't see what's the problem hurting i mean we've waited this long before on most projects i mean he let him come before us first and then once we have a better understanding then we can go and 
and adjust the funding where we need. And I don't disagree. I mean, when I looked at some of the actual engineering on that, I mean, I think we had two engineers on, on what we were looking at. So, uh, you know, Dubrock's been there long enough. I, I think he, he knows that, that area in and out. Thank you. Mr. Macharam. I, I think Ms. Broussard summed it up pretty well. Um, I mean, if a study needs to be done to help for some grant funding, that's great. My problem was spending $50,000 to study all the way to the parish line, and that project may not be come to life for another 10 years, and then you're going to have to study it again. So my focus was on Water District 3's area that they're currently serving, and of course we need to reduce this $50,000 price tag because it should be reasonably done for 25 to 30. I'd say 30, and if it helps us get some grants, great, but in the same instance, we'll get an idea of what needs to, done and like what needs to be done and like Mr. Gashasan said, I think Mr. Dubrock, uh, Mr. LeBlanc has a good idea of what needs to be done. Now, will it take some outside funding if, this, if the grant will help that with a study? Great, but my whole issue was to spend $50,000 for something that may not see the light of day for another 10 years, and where you could reduce it you know, almost by half and take care of a, a problem that you have currently. Yes. Okay, Mr. Trahan. Mr. Reshore. Oh, yes. Can you give the water districts three engineer here for the next meeting? Mr. Dubrock, you're talking about? Uh, yeah, Dale actually. and and Jody. Yeah, I went to the last meeting, of course, uh, when you was there in arrest. I think mm -hmm. he said he had a conflict with being here today. Absolutely. I don't think he would have. I think he would be here if he didn't have a conflict. I really did. Well, I have no idea. This is the second time. The third time, we we're gonna ask for something yeah, else. I'll ask. I'll call him myself. Okay. So you we'll want him here the next, Marty? You want him here at the next council meeting? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. The next council meeting, yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna follow a Warren lead on this. It needs to go back to Waterwork District Four. They need to come back with the recommendations from their board Water on exactly three. what they want to. Three. Three. Two. I'm sorry, on what they want to have done and give us that exact cost what needs to be done, and we'll vote on that exact figure when they when, when they propose it to us. So they need to come back and tell us the scope of the project they want to have done <clears throat> and what the engineer fee is going to be at that time. And we'll, we'll vote on it. So I, I, Dubrock. So I, I agree with the table hmm. for now. Hmm. Let's see, Ms. Broussard. Move to table it to the next meeting. Eugene. I have a motion to table. Mr. Gonsolin is a second. Uh, any other discussion? Ms. Gosh, Sam? If Brenda could, or if Ms. Brousseau would amend to when we know he's officially coming, we would just pull it off the shelf and, and have the meeting, have the discussion then. Instead of we tabling and then he has another conflict, that, yeah, until Mr. Dubrock confirms. So, Brenda, you going to call Mr. Dubrock and get him here? Or, or even if you can get with a Larry, either way. Mr. Sheely, is that acceptable that it's tabled until? The, Mr. Dubrock is available. Until the next meeting at Mr. Dubrock is available. Thank you, Ms. Russo. Right. Let's go with that. Okay. Any other further discussion? Roll call. And motion passes. Summary number 156 introduced by Recreation and Playground, a resolution amending the 2018 Recreation District fund budget in an amount of $18,750 to account for additional revenues from the day camp program. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Olivier. Ms. Broussard? Wait. Uh, no other discussion? Roll call? Tommy. Uh, that motion passes. Summary number 157 introduced by the Airport Authority, a resolution and amending the 2018 Airport Authority fund budget in the amount of $58,035 to provide for carryover appropriations for runway 16 slash 34 improvement projects all to be funded from federal and state grant funding. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Tommy Landry. Ms. Broussard? Wait. Mr. Tommy Landry? No further discussion. Roll call. Mr. Brown. Tommy. And that motion passes. Summary number 158 introduced by the Tourist Commission and resolution amending the 2018 Tourist mm. Commission fund budget in the amount of 150000 to provide for public 
publicity purchases to be funded with the BP grant funding received. Have a motion by Mr. Gonsalam, a second by Ms. Broussard. Mr. Gonsalam? Please. Ms. Broussard? Please. <clears throat> Mr. Brown, any discussion? Please. No discussion, roll call. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Napier? Oh, and motion passes. We have a motion to adjourn. Roll call. Okay. Roll call. Gordon, Chad, Tommy, Paul. Paul. 